So if I cut a chunk of soil out of the ground here, just a foot square around my feet and went down a couple of feet, there would be something like 70 trillion bacterial cells and 20,000 um, miles of fungal hyphae. I think that would surprise most people. So when I first came to Harvard Forest in 2002, most of the work was still focused above ground. But in the last 20 years, there's been really, I would say, an exponential growth in kind of our digging into, so to speak, and um, learning about that underground world, those, that, that microbial community and linkages between that community and ecosystem scale processes. So yeah, as you walk around the forest, you may not be able to really see any uh, visual change, at least to the, to the human eye. But if you just um, look a little bit below the surface, you actually can see big changes. And so for example, if we, um, when we're sampling soil, we will cut out a chunk of the organic horizon, which we call a forest floor brownie, because the organic horizon looks like a brownie in, um, you know, a larger version of that. And when you do that in these plots, if you go to the control plot, you have an organic horizon that's maybe five centimeters in depth. If you go to the nitrogen addition plots, you have a brownie that's a, a little bit uh, deeper or thicker. Um, and when you go to the heated plots, you see that that or organic horizon has, has basically, I don't want to say, well, burned away or shrunk in size because of the accelerated decomposition that's been occurring in those plots over time. Our group focuses um, specifically on decomposer fungi because fungi, at least in this um, ecosystem, are the primary decomposers of, um, or, uh, of organic materials, plant litter, plant roots, um, and so on. Um, and so we're interested in, you know, with warming, long-term warming, um, long-term uh, soil nitrogen enrichment, are those communities changing? Are the species that are present um, changing. So warming is the primary driver of community change um, um, in comparison to nitrogen. And we're finding that with warming, either in combination with nitrogen or without, um, the fungal community becomes uh, dominated by one particular species. I mean, now we're trying to understand what that might mean for longer term carbon cycling. Even if these forests remain in the foreseeable future as overall net carbon sinks with a loss of soil organic matter that we see with soil warming, um, that will impact soil carbon cycling and nutrient cycling in the soil, which has an impact on plant health and plant productivity. This LTR experiment, the long-term warming experiment, was started in 1991. I was a sophomore in high school, and it's just like, incredible to me to like imagine sort of, you know, Jerry uh, and uh, his collaborators out here sort of setting this up while I just still wasn't really thinking about these questions at all. In the soil, like part of what makes it black is this organic matter. And the microbial biomass is like one to 2% of that organic matter. So it's a small fraction, but it completely turns over every one to two weeks, all new microbes. So it's through this like turn, you know, turnover like many, many times a season, production of extracellular products, enzymes, um, uh, polymers, biofilms formed on uh, grains of minerals um, that give microbes their sort of outstanding impact, even though they are like a relatively small portion of the, the soil carbon. And right now, we don't know how sort of microbial communities fit together. And so one of the things that we can do in the lab is sort of take the system apart and put it back together um, so that we can see how much we could predict the actual complex systems. I have two undergraduate researchers right now working on um, trait adaptation. One of them, Achala Narayanan, is looking specifically at the actinobacteria and using these model soils, and she's growing them. The nice thing about the model soils is we can precisely control the microbes 
and their food and uh, every other aspect, including moisture content. So we developed them to sort of behave as much like the Harvard forest soils as possible. Um, and what we found, or what Achla has found, is that the uh, actinobacteria from the warm soils are more drought tolerant than those from the control. So they're able to mineralize more carbon and grow more under these really low soil moisture conditions. Like, why do we care about ad adaptive traits? And um, I, partly I got interested in this field because microbial representation in models has either been absent or really uh, simplified and reduced. Um, and so there's good evidence, not from our lab, but from you know, modeling labs, um, good evidence that um, including microbial parameters improves our predictions about what's going to happen to things like soil, carbon, stocks. And so that's why having access to this experiment where we've been warming for 30 years gives us an estimate of how should traits change over that time. So this is kind of going to be the next um, sort of innovation in uh, ecosystem modeling is incorporating evolution of traits that are responsive to things like temperature um, over time. We have this amazing resource in the Culture Collection. Um, this is a hill I will die on, that Culture Collections are invaluable um, scientific resources. So we have these, you know, a thousand microbes in our freezer that were isolated from these soils right here. So we know when they were isolated, we know pretty much exactly where they came from, um, and we can use all of the other information we know about the long-term warming experiment and the soils um, and the entire microbial communities and leverage that with the very specific information we get about a single microbe. We're really excited about this new experiment because we have we have genomic data, which can sort of give us a computational window into potential adaptive features. Um, and we you know, also have physiological data of how these strains grow in the lab. This is an iChip hotel, and it is a wild microbial party hotel. We overlay each side with a membrane that allows um, water and nutrients to permeate through, but not cells, so that that microbe is sort of, you know, isolated in its hotel room for the entire experiment. Um, and these we put in the ground right behind us. But I think the important, um, the important hypothesis is, uh, are the microbes from the control plots better adapted to the control or the heated? So that's the, that's the big question. I, th I think I've, I've learned as a scientist to not be surprised by anything or, or to be surprised by everything.